Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to 149th weekly Semao session. We are here meeting for a very important topic. We all have seen recently conjunctivitis is one of the major issues which is happening. It could be because of the rainy season. It could be because of infection being spreading. So today, to discuss this topic on this important forum, we have Dr. Vishali Vijay Varad. She will be talking about an approach to red eye. Uh, people who want to join this session, I know this session is also important for patients and general public. If you guys want to join this session, you can come on Zoom. The session is eight, uh, the Zoom meeting ID is 818-8591-1572. I repeat, 818-8591-1572. Uh, Dr. Vishali has done a fellowship in cataract surgery eye disease, squint, retina, and glaucoma from one of the top international famous institute, eye institute, Lakshmi Eye Institute. She has done a DNB from Mumbai University under the care of Dr. R.C. Patel, who has been internationally renowned eye specialist in Mumbai Hospital Institute of Medical Sciences. She has done a glaucoma fellowship from Arvind Eye Institute. She has done a retina fellowship in Desai Eye Hospital. She's a consultant and director at Sai Netrela and Speciality Clinic in Pune, and she has over a decade experience. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, please enlighten us with the important topic. Yeah. 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 Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction, and uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful opportunity. I'll be sharing my slide. Thank you. Visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Yeah. Please go ahead. So, so I'll be talking on uh, approach to red eye. Uh, so why this is important? Uh, it's not moving. Maybe. Okay. So why it is important to know about the red eyes or the causes of the uh, red eye in the details? Because this is a treatment or the common complaint that patient comes to a general practitioner uh, and uh, uh, it can be related to mild ocular diseases or it can be related to vision threatening diseases. So this is very important to diagnose or uh, uh, to give a primary treatment and to pick up the red flag signs as early as possible and guide patient according to that to visit uh, an ophthalmologist to have a detailed eye checkup as we all are aware uh, ophthalmology itself, a uh, super specialty branch it needs and uh, microscopic examination or slip lamp examination to see the deeper structure because with a torchlight examination, we are not able to see uh, the deeper structures involved in the diseases. So this is a very important topic that we are discussing today. Before going to the causes and differential diagnosis of the red eye, this is a basic anatomy of a eye. These are the lid, upper and lower lid. So this act as a protective uh, layer to prevent or it takes everything, one trauma or uh, foreign body, and it uh, protect the eyeball from the injury. So then this is in cornea, then conjunctiva. Conjunctiva, it starts from the uh, cornea to the posterior surface of the eyelid. Then there's an set the all external uh, structures. Then internally there is an iris. There is a central aperture called as a pupil. Uh, behind the pupil there is a lens, and then there is a vitreous retina, choroid, and sclera. And of, of course optic nerve, which goes uh, to meet brain posterior. So this is a basic anatomy of an eye. Coming to a differential diagnosis of red eye, always start to examine from anterior to posterior. So first structure that we see is an eyelid. So this is just related to lid. A uh, patient can come present, can present with a redness of an eye. It can or cannot, or it may or may not be associated with a pain or the uh, or the discharge. Then uh, other causes are related to conjunctiva, cornea. Uh, then other structures, retina, uvea, it can be related to trauma and foreign body. So we'll see one by one 
how patient it looks like and how patient present with these all different diseases with redness, redness and associated complaints. So of course, lid. So blepharitis, it is more seen in an adult than a children, but it can be seen in a, uh, adults and children also. This is an inflammation of lid margin. According to anatomical in position, it is anterior blepharitis and posterior or the meibomian gland dysfunction. Then uh, anterior blepharitis can be associated with style. So while managing this patient, this is how anterior blepharitis look like. This is present anterior to the gray line of a lid. And this is an posterior uh, blepharitis present posterior to the gray line of a uh, eyelid. So the anterior blepharitis, again, it can be an, uh, uh, a simple blepharitis or uh, uh, it can be associated with parasitic infection such as uh, domodex. And the posterior blepharitis, it cause an inflammation of a meibomian gland duct causing a redness of an eye. This are, uh, these uh, blepharitis is associated with an itching, burning sensation, sometimes dryness of an uh, eyes, uh, along with an redness of eye. So this is a sky, how it looks like. Sky, it is in red and painful lump near the edge of the eyelid. So here there is an inflammation of the eye, uh, cycle of an eyelash. So this is how uh, patient will present to us. Then there is an, uh, another form of sky that is an internal hardilum or the internal sky. And here there is an this, uh, swelling and redness from the which presence of which comes in the inner side of an eyelid. So treatment need here is an hot fermentation. We may need to give an systemic antibiotic to reduce the inflammation, uh, acute inflammation. Sometimes it uh, uh, non-steroid and anti-inflammatory medicines and topically antibiotic uh, also we may need to give. So this is about the blepharitis. And uh, related to an lead malpositions, uh, mal, mal one is an, this is an entropion, this is an entropion. So what is entropion is interning of an eyelid margin. So because of the interning, you can see these lattice, these rubs to the ocular surface causing a redness of an eye. This is an ectropion. This is an outturning of an uh, it, This leads to an of an uh, ocular surface causing uh, redness, dryness, and uh, other complaints also. So management required in these conditions is, an, of course, surgical management. Then coming to an conjunctivitis. Now it is uh, conjunctivitis is very much going on. At least in India, it is very much going on, uh, as this is this is in rainy season. So there are uh, basically viral uh, types of conjunctivitis are viral conjunctivitis, bacterial conjunctivitis, and allergic conjunctivitis. So viral conjunctivitis patient comes to us uh, with an acute redness, watering, with a foreign body sensation or a pricking sensation. Sometimes this can be associated with mild to moderate swelling of an eyelids. So uh, on examination, there is a congenital condition or conjunctiva is uh, intensely hyperemic and there may be an presence of follicles or the hemorrhage that is called as an hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Or uh, there can be an inflammatory membrane also on a pathophonesis or at the tarsal plate. So uh, this is uh, sometimes associated with pre lymph nodes. Patient, if you if you ask patient whether do you get a pain here at a pre region, so or you can palpate also. This is associated with pre lymphadenopathy. And most common cause of an viral conjunctivitis is adenoviral infections. So treatment required here is an assurance to patient, then cold, cold compressions. Um, then we can give a mild antibiotic to prevent in secondary infections and lubricating eye drops. It also helps to uh, you know, um, wash the uh, discharge and uh, patient feels comfortable with the lubricants. So this is a uh, difference between a bacterial and viral conjunctivitis. So in a bacterial conjunctivitis, discharge is mucopurulent to purulent discharge. In a viral conjunctivitis, discharge is watery. Bacterial conjunctivitis is generally bilateral. Viral may present with a unilateral, but other eye can involve between 10 to 12 days at any time. Then 
This may be associated with hepatitis media and viral conjunctivitis is associated with meningitis. We call it as parambo conjunctival fever. Then adenopathy is present in a viral conjunctivitis, but it uh, is not present in a bacterial conjunctivitis. So uh, then this is how follicles look like. This is how membrane. There are two types of membrane. One is in pseudo membrane and second one is true membrane. Pseudo membrane we can easily fill up with the uh, forceps. So true membrane it bleeds once if you try to fill the membrane. So this is how viral conjunctivitis looks like. Then coming to bacterial conjunctivitis. Again, it can uh, involve adult and children. Uh, complaints, watery, uh, the uh, mucopurulent to purulent discharge, then foreign body sensation, burning of her eyes, then there is an edema lid uh, and conjunctiva also may be an edematous. Most common organism causing in bacterial conjunctivitis is streptococcus pneumoniae or staphylococcus aureus. And then treatment needed here is a broad spectrum antibiotic. So you can also see in the conjunctival form for cultural sensitivity. Here, mainstay of a treatment is in bacterial conjunctivitis. Along with that, supplementary uh, treatment like in cold fermentation, frequently cleaning of an eye and lubricating eye drops. And difference between an viral and bacterial conjunctivitis, I have already explained about this is in the features of a viral conjunctivitis. So coming to an allergic conjunctivitis. So allergic conjunctivitis, it has a spectrum of a, a, a varieties uh, to present with. It can present with a mild but a disturbing form and severe, which can be a vision threatening also. So allergic conjunctivitis, it needs a thorough examination uh, with a slit lamp to see the um, grade of an allergic conjunctivitis. It is mild, moderate or severe allergic conjunctivitis. So in the history, main complaint in you know, allergic conjunctivitis is an itching. In viral and bacterial patient we are seeing, we'll see there is a foreign body or pricking sensation, pricking sensation. But in allergic conjunctivitis, this is associated with the itching or eye rubbing. Also, there is a uh, history of rhinitis, asthma, or other atopic diseases, or family history of atopies always, always present in a allergic conjunctivitis. So in these signs, uh, it may have, it may present me, patient may have a mild redness of eyes, then uh, discharge mainly this is a watery and a ropey kind of discharge. So this is a whitish instead of a yellowish color in a bacterial conjunctivitis. So this is a ropey discharge patient can contain with. This is how chemosis will look like. This is an edematous conjunctiva called as a chemosis. And patients present with an papillary uh, hypertrophy. It can be around limbus also and at a tarsal also. And and papilla, the constant appearance of the papilla. This is because of an inflammatory response of a tarsal plate. So there is a difference in a papilla and follicle. Follicle is a sign of an viral conjunctivitis. Papilla is a sign of an allergic conjunctivitis. So papilla is an inflammatory. So here generally is a red and this is a pale. And in a follicle, it occurs because of the collection of a WBC. So there is an absence of a blood vessel to so the capillaries. So top is uh, pale in, in a follicular conjunctivitis. Treatment here, it again need on the needs depending upon the severity of disease. And basically, root cause management, we should always think about by detecting the causative allergen that causes an allergic conjunctivitis. So after detection of an allergen, we can guide patient for the avoidance Avoidance is the disease modifying or can change the course of a disease. And some allergens we cannot uh, avoid in our day-to-day -day, uh, life, just uh, like a dust mite group of allergens or pollens. We cannot sit at home by closing our window all the time to prevent the uh, exposure to the allergens. So these patients need to undergo desensitization by an immunotherapy. Again, there are two types of immunotherapy available. One is injectable and second one is an oral uh, sublingual immunotherapy. Along with that, uh, ocular management is also important. So allergic conjunctivitis needs systemic management also, as well as ocular management also. So ocular management we can do uh, by giving an antihistamine drops. 
mast cells that uh, uh, stabilize a drug. Topical corticosteroids are a mainstay of an allergic uh, diseases, and then the cyclosporin uh, eye drop. See, while giving a uh, topical corticosteroids, always ask uh, uh, guide patients about the side effects of the steroid also. Because if patient feels better with that drop, they will uh, continue the same drop again and again to get in symptomatic relief or sometimes over the counter medicines also very much uh, given to in such diseases. So patient can present with complications related to uh, conjunctitis as well as complications related to medicines. Complications related to medicine is because of the overuse of the steroids. And patient can come with a steroid-induced glaucoma or steroid-induced cataract. So what are the ocular complications of an allergic conjunctitis? This is a shield ulcer. Why this shield ulcer happens because of the genin papillae, which, which I present here in the tarsal plate. So with every blink, it rubs on your cornea and it disturbs the superior epithelial layer of the cornea, causing an shield ulcer. Sometimes patients can have a just superficial amputated keratitis, that is an SP case, but patient can go in and shield ulcer. If we don't treat this uh, with an uh, urgent management, then this can infect uh, badly to, you know, sometimes we need to, a patient may have in vitro treatment complications also. This is how limbal cell cell deficiency uh, can happen in an allergy conjunctitis. What is limbal cell deficiency? Limbal cells are present around the, uh, at the limbus. So because of the repeated inflammation, that happens and limbal stem cell deficiency leads to and such type of uh, panis and corneal opacification. So again, this needs a surgical intervention uh, for the management. Then, even though patient is not having that much of uh, redness of eye, but associated with an eye rubbing or the patient complains of frequent eye rubbing, the, these patients may can may go in a complication such as in keratoconus. So what is keratoconus is, this is in cornea, which uh, has a uh, uh, convex shape, but because of the rubbing, there occurs the thinning of an uh, corneal layers and cornea becomes a conical shape, so causing an irregular astigmatism. So sometimes it becomes so uh, uh, thin that there occurs the rupture of an indo the displaced membrane, which is the inner structure of a cornea. Cornea has a five layers of an uh, anatomical file is so inside layer is endosmic membranes which gets structured uh, and aqueous humor gets in, entry into the inside of an uh, corneal layer causing an acute hydrops. So if we diagnose this at early phase we can manage with a different kind of uh, management such as in, uh, contact lenses or rigid contact lenses sometimes clearer contact lenses or mm, we may need collagen cross-linking or we can uh, do collagen cross-linking to prevent the further progress of keratoconus. Uh, but in severe case, cases, we may need to transplant a cornea or penetrating keratoplasty also we may need to perform. So even early detection and early diagnosis by a thorough ophthalmic examination, um, we can prevent such type of complications in allergic conjunctivitis. So this is in compile picture of an all. This is, this is what you see papilla in allergic conjunctitis, colloquial in a viral conjunctitis, type of copious uh, purulent discharge in cases of a bacterial conjunctivitis. Chemosis is again, we can get it in a allergic conjunctivitis, and redness is, an, uh, uh, depending upon the severity of disease, redness is present in all type of conjunctivitis. So, this is all about the conjunctivitis. Then, coming to another cause of a redness of our eye subconjunctal hemorrhage. It can be diffused or a localized. So here, this is a localized, this is a uh, diffused. So there are uh, different causes uh, of a subconjunctal hemorrhage, is a trauma. It can be because of a severe cough or the sneezing. But what most importantly is always ask these patients about using a blood thinners. If they are on a blood thinners, they can ask, them, ask them to stop because patient can go in a cerebral hemorrhage by um, leading through the intracerebral small vessels. So this is about the subconjunctal. Again, we need to see the margin of a subconjunctal hemorrhage. If we see the margin of a uh, 
uh, from cranial dynamic in a head injury if it is because of the uh, bleeding uh, this can come in a subconjunctiva or the it can show in subconjunctal hemorrhage. So here we can you know, trace the margin of subconjunctal hemorrhage. So this we can very well pick up it up, uh, or the, we can see if it is secondary to the trauma or secondary to the other causes. So treatment required here is a mainly for cold fermentation and management of a cause. If it is related to hypertension, we need to control the hypertension. If it is related to uh, use of a blood thinner, we need to stop it. If cough and sneezing, then we need to give a simultaneous treatment of a cough for the uh, along with the help of your physician. And vitamin C has a good role to uh, uh, absorb the number of blood a uh, little bit earlier. So this is how subconjunctal hemorrhage will look like. Then coming to a dry eye. So our eye is protected with lids and superficial tear film, which is present on the ocular surface. So lacrimal gland is where these tears are secreted with. And every blink, this blink spreads this tear film on the ocular surface evenly. So blink is very important to give a fresh uh, tear layer on your ocular surface, as well as to wash out the toxins which are accumulated uh, on your ocular surfaces. So there are two types of dry eye. One, it is because of the uh, poor quality of and uh, tears. And second one is related to poor quantity of uh, tear fluid. So uh, as I told, key tears are secreted from a lacrimal gland. So there are other two layers uh, which are present in a tear film. One is a lipid layer, which is secreted by a meibomian gland, which we see in the, at the margin of a lid, and then goblet cells, these are present on a conjunctiva itself. So lipid layer is secreted by a meibomian gland, and uh, mucin layer is secreted by a goblet cells. If there is a disturbance in any of a, uh, these three components of a tear film, patient can complain of a dry eye. So how patients comes to us is, uh, chronic red eye, then it can be associated with a burning sensation. Patient himself or herself says that my I feel my eyes are dry uh, after continuous or the more exposure to the um, computers. At the end of the day, my eye feels tired. That can also uh, one of the presenting presentation of a patient uh, in a dry eye syndromes. So in a uh, uh, poor quality, it is basically due to a pneumomian gland disease. Uh, it can be related to vitamin A or uh, deficiency or a D deficiency also. Poor quantity is because of the less secretion of anterior film. It happens, that is called as an keratoconjunctal disica. It can be, it uh, happens in a job syndrome, uh, rheumatoid arthritis also, or sometimes lacrimal diseases such as a sarcoidosis. So how do we manage the dry eye uh, uh, syndrome is first analyze where it is at, uh, related to poor quantity of a disease that is an aqueous deficiency and whether it is a poor uh, quality of a disease, this is an, that is called as an evaporated dry eye diseases. So we can give and uh, depending upon the severity uh, or the, depending upon the uh, Sharma's taste and tear breakup time, we can give an lubricating drops. Different types of lubricating drops are available in today. That includes HPMC, hydroxymethyl cellulose, and CMC, carboxymethyl cellulose, and sodium hyaluronic. So, according to severity of eye, uh, we can give a dryness, uh, we can manage the dryness of eye. Cyclosporine has a good role to reduce the inflammation. 0.05% of a cyclosporine topical eye drop has a good role to reduce the inflammation, but we have to prescribe at least two uh, for a long term to have a good effect of it. So, this is an terrestrial. Uh, there is an abnormal growth of a subconjunctival uh, tissue over the cornea causing a terrifying. This is how terrifying will look like. This needs a surgical management with an uh, excision of a terrifying along with a conjunctival graft. And then coming to a corneal causes. Before going to corneal or the further causes, I'll just like to explain here the type of or the condition how it looks like. This is a conjunctival condition how it looks like. Vessels are superficial and uh, little broader. Uh, these we see it in a conjunctival diseases or the conjunctivitis. 
and there is a pericorneal uh, convulsion. It again we can see in a corneal foreign body uh, or a corneal lesions near the limbus. Uh, then coming in mixed type of the uh, condition. It is associated with the congenital condition also and circumciliary condition also. This we see in a corneal ulcers or uh, some uh, intraocular pathology is there. The only ciliary condition, this indicates the involvement of cornea and deeper structures and there is no involvement of uh, congenital. So this can be uh, seen in a different types of diseases such as the episcleritis, scleritis, keratitis, thyroiditis, and cycleritis. So, so this is a red flag sign. It is a ciliary condition. That means there is an involvement of other structure than a con conventiva and needs a thorough examination by an ophthalmologist. So then coming to a conventiva causes. So corneal abrasion can present with an redness associated with an watering and foreign body sensation and sometimes pain and photophobia. Because of an abrasion, patient has an uh, intense photophobia. Depending upon the severity of abrasion, uh, photophobia, uh, sometimes patient is not able to open their eyes also. So we need to put an uh, paracaine or anesthetic agent to feel comfortable, patient, uh, make, uh, make patient comfortable, and then we can examine the patients under CLM. So corneal abrasion, so there is a disturbance in a special layer of a, a cornea. It can be secondary to a trauma, it can be secondary to the chemical burn, it can be secondary to a rubbing of a foreign body which is present on a tarsal plate. So uh, it gets stream with a fluorescing to uh, see the, so this is how this corneal abrasion looks like after the fluorescent training. So this is a superficial layer of a cornea has been uh, disturbed, so causing a corneal abrasion. If foreign body is, uh, is there at the uh, tarsal plate, it keeps rubbing on the cornea with every blink and leads to an irregular practice or irregular application of a uh, cornea. So we need to remove the corneal foreign body in these patients. Then coming to a foreign body. If it can present with redness, watery, and history, we can may give history that something has, uh, you know, uh, something bent in his eye. It can be in corneal foreign body, it can be in tarsal foreign body. So corneal foreign body, we need to remove it under the slit lamp to get a depth perception of a foreign body. This, uh, uh, maybe you can remove it under a torch light. This is a tarsal foreign body. So this keeps on rubbing on the cornea and causing a corneal abrasion. Then coming to a corneal ulcer. So corneal ulcer, uh, it can be uh, bacterial, viral, viral again, herpes simplex, herpes gestural, it can be related to fungus, it can be related to protozoa, uh, uh, protozoa such as acanthamoeba. And this is mostly common seen in contact lens weather. So always ask when patients come to you with a redness history of a contact lens, do they use the contact lenses uh, or are they uh, contact lens users? So, uh, again, corneal ulcer needs and thorough examination under the slit lamp examination. We need to scrap the uh, ulcer. We may need to see it for the QS training and uh, for the further uh, examination, micro microbiological examination. And we need a management according to the cause of uh, corneal ulcer. If it is a bacterial, then we need to give a broad spectrum antibiotic. If it is a viral, then we need to give and depending upon the whether it's the epithelial, stromal, or endothelial uh, involvement of endothelium, again, uh, treatment varies with uh, topical or cyclo along with topical or cyclovir. We may need to give a systemic acid also. And fungal management is uh, different depending upon the severity of uh, corneal ulcer. So this is how corneal ulcer look like in a heart. Uh, in a herpes simplex, uh, herpes, this dendritic pattern is seen in a herpes simplex corneal ulcer. Herpes zoster also we can get a such type of an uh, dendritic pattern that is called as a pseudodendritic pattern. So this is generally in a, at the center of a cornea. In a herpes zoster we get it at a peripheral lesion uh, at the periphery of a cornea. This is a severe corneal ulcer. How it looks like this? This is a non-infective. This ulcer can be an infective and non-infective. So more in ulcer or the peripheral uh, keratitis, it may be associated with other collagen uh, 
uh, diseases such as the uh, arthritis or venous uh, granulomatosis. So corneal examination needs a thorough examination. So this is an episcleritis. Epis episclera is a structure present behind the conjunctiva and uh, above the sclera. So there is an inflammation of a episcleral tissue causing an episcleritis. This can be a nodular or this can be a uh, diffused or the localized episcleritis. So this, this patients, these patients present with redness, sometimes associated with a mild pain, and uh, this is uh, generally self-limiting or patient may need an topical uh, low-dose steroid to control the inflammation. So it can be associated or uh, idiopathic or it can be associated with a collagen vascular disorder. Then scleritis, sclera, the involvement of sclera or deeper, uh, it is present behind the conjunctiva. So these patients present with a redness associated with pain. So sclera is the site where they are extraocular muscles are inserted on. So if there is an inflammation of an sclera, an scleritis patient may complain of pain while eye movements. If it is uh, scleritis near the insertion of an uh, muscles, then patient may present with them, may complain that there is a pain while ocular movements or uh, redness is associated with dull pain. So again, causes are different. It can be an idiopathic, or it can be related to an vascular uh, collagen vascular diseases. It can be an infective, and uh, it, it also needs a thorough examination along with an, uh, sometimes systemic management along with, with the help of the uh, rheumatologist, with the steroids, or with the immunosuppressant also. So this is how scleritis looks like. This is a deep, this is how redness of the scleritis looks like. This is an diffuse scleritis. Because of the repeated scleritis, Sclera may get thinned out, causing a such type of uh, uh, blackish discoloration. You can see at the structures uh, below the sclera are the visible. So this type of an uh, blue or the blackish discoloration you can see because of the thinning of the sclera. Then coming to an urea. Urea includes iris, retina, and choroid. So these are the posterior structures present in our eye anatomy. It can be an uh, anterior uveitis posterior uveitis or it can be a pan uveitis. In an anterior uveitis, there is an involvement of iris. In a posterior, there is an involvement of vitreous, retina, and choroid. And in a pan uveitis, all structures get involved in the uh, pan uveitis. It is anterior and posterior also. Anterior uveitis patient complain along with a redness, photophobia, and this is associated with a decreased vision. So again, photophobia index in, uh, indicates involvement of deeper structure or the involvement of cornea. So if patient redness always ask patient whether it is related to a intolerance of light, that is a photophobia. That means this is a red flag, red flag sign. Then causes again is an idiopathic. Uh, they may be associated with an uh, arthropathies or uh, psoriatic arthritis, Ritter's disease, or sometimes it can be associated with autoimmune diseases such as sarcoid disease and Wedgett disease. It can be secondary to infections such as toxoplasma, tuberculosis, or the syphilis. So this again need a uh, further evaluation and uh, proper management with an ophthalmologist, sometimes involving other specialities also. So th this is how the circumciliary condition look like. I have explained about it before also. Sinaridocyclitis or whenever there is an involvement of a deeper structure, that type of condition we get. So you can see here there is a not too much condition, but most of mostly uh, perilimbal area is congested. KBs we see behind the uh, or the back part of the cornea. These are the KBs or the exudates. Uh, Hypopion also we can get. Uh, because of the exudate. So flares and sales, these are the slit lamp findings that we get in a iridoscopitis or the um, uveitis patient. Mm -hmm. This is in retinitis or the vascular like vasculitis, this is in vitritis, then um, this is in choroiditis. This is how posterior uveitis looks like, which needs thorough examination with a slit lamp, dilated examination, uh, or the examination with indirect ophthalmoscope. Then coming to an angle closure glaucoma. Patient uh, can present with an redness with a severe pain 
headache and generally headache is so severe uh, it's a throbbing type of headache and this is associated with that vomiting because of the raised intraocular pressure normal pressure is around 20 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury in an acute angle pressure glaucoma patient can uh, pressure can raise about the uh, about uh, 60 or 70 millimeters of the mercury and patient can present in a casualty with such type of a complaints. So again, there on touch light examination also, you can see red eye is red. There is a corneal edema, uh, circumciliary congestion, pupil. So this is the most important thing. Pupil, it is non-reacting to the light and EC is shallow. Pressure, you can measure with a digital intraocular pressure also you can measure this um, uh, with the help of the fingers, you need to uh, push your fingers on a, uh, ask the patient to look down and with the finger pressure, you can analyze, analyze a digital intraocular pressure. So in an acute angle closure glaucoma, pressure is very much high. So this needs an uh, urgent management by reducing an intraocular pressure by giving an IV mannitol, giving a uh, tablet Dimox, and locally you can give an uh, iotin eye drop, or you can give a glycerin to reduce a uh, uh, corneal edema, and you can do a gonioscopy also. So this is how acute angle closure glaucoma patients present with. So now, uh, in a conclusion, when patients of a redness comes to a general practitioner on a, in a casualty, always ask about the history of a trauma, history of a contact lens use, whether the redness is present associated with the pain, photophobia, uh, whether it is associated with the vision, significant vision changes or decrease in the vision, or uh, there is an, any history of a similar episode before. Then on examination, Assess the visual acuity, how much you can uh, see in uh, casualty or uh, snanal chant is the best way to uh, visual assessment of a vision. Then with the torchlight examination, you can see the type of congestion, how it is, and see the uh, corneal involvement, whether you can, uh, can you see the foreign body on a cornea uh, or the, on the tarsal, you can even the tarsal plate, then see the pupillary reaction, how it is normal or uh, it is fixed, dilated, not reacting to light, then see about the tenderness and then see about the whether there is any corneal infiltration, corneal opacity, and measure the intraocular pressure with the uh, finger by to assess the regional intraocular pressure. So these are all red flag, flag, flag signs where we need to refer these patients to an ophthalmologist on a urgent basis to send these to. I or to see the uh, vision of that patient. In a summary, these are the common causes of a redness of an eye that patients present with injury, pink eye, uh, again, viral, bacterial, then nephritis, uveitis, again, anterior, posterior, allergic conjunctivitis, uh, corneal ulcer, dryness of the eye, eye uh, uh, sty. It can be an uh, external hardium, internal hardium, then acute glaucoma, sclerosis, episcleritis, then subconjunctival hemorrhage, or uh, because infection related to contact lenses. Also, sometimes overuse of contact lens can present with a redness of an eye at the end of the day. So this is all about the uh, redness common causes and how when we should. Uh, what are the uh, red flag signs and when we should refer it to the so thank you. Thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, shall I stop in my slides? Yes, ma'am, you can stop. Thank you so much for uh, the wonderful presentation. And uh, I would like to now invite uh, the member of the forum for the question answers, I also welcome Dr. Chong, who is a chair, and Dr. Wazik, who is the president for Semao. Dr. Chong, would you like to go ahead with the question? And the, yeah. Hi, um, this, uh, thank you, Dr. Rushali Warat for Hi, the Richard. wonderful presentation. Uh, I tuned in a little bit late, but I caught
quite a bit of it, and it's a very, very useful uh, algorithm you've given us uh, without access to a slit lamp, <laughs> which is so, you know, clinically so useful. Yeah. Ophthalmology is a super specialty branch, you know, so to diagnose the things with a slit lamp and all. I, I don't know whether you mentioned uh, in your presentation, but I usually feel for the pre-auricular node, limb node here, uh, yeah. to look for viral conjunctivitis is almost like a hundred percent diagnosis. But, yeah. Always ask, or you can palpate the pre-auricular node here, be about, near the pin of an ear. So this is a sign of a viral conjunctivitis. And these patients may be associated with an pharyngitis uh, or the uh, sore throat also. Yes. Um, I any welcome questions? any questions from the floor. Okay, so uh, the Chong, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Okay, great. Uh, may I add something? Sure. Okay. Uh, being an ophthalmologist, I think it was a wonderful talk. Thank you, Dr. Michali, for uh, such a comprehensive account of red eye uh, in such a short time. Uh, it was wonderful listening to you. Uh, anyway, uh, since it was uh, for the family physician, uh, whenever the family physician comes up with the red eye, they always go on and start with these steroids. And uh, we should definitely, uh, you know, put a warning sign that a steroid is not the treatment of red eye. As you have already mentioned, the complications of steroids, because uh, we have seen people going into uh, blindness uh, because of uh, long use of steroids, especially in the vernal qatar or the spring qatar. Uh, the children, they were uh, once given the steroids. They keep on using uh, steroids for longer time because it is the response uh, is quick and the parents and the uh, the child uh, gets uh, you know clearance of red eye uh, very quickly so uh, the self medication and use of a steroid there should be a clear warning that uh, it should not always be used and uh, uh, as you have mentioned, there are hundreds of causes of red eye, and every cause has a different, uh, 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 you know, set of management, and one differs to the other entirely differently. So it has to be, uh, you know, an ophthalmologist who should examine it, starting from that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, leads to. Uh, the uh, posterior uveitis and glaucoma and all that. So uh, thank you uh, for a wonderful presentation. I think uh, the warnings and uh, the eyebrows should always rise uh, when you are prescribing medicines uh, like uh, you know the corneal involvement, where the photophobia uh, tells you that the now the conjunctivitis has uh, you know involved cornea also and it's now the keratoconjunctivitis and the use of steroids at that point will definitely complicate things further so it is always good for a family physician that uh, if they think that the uh, this red eye should be referred to ophthalmologist it's it's it should be done Thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful Thank you. Doctor, there's a question from the forum uh, on the on the group chat. It says that uh, does herpes, you talked about herpes in the eye. So is there a long-term effect which can have uh, post the uh, treatment of, of herpes in the eye? So I know it is a painful uh, disease in the eye. Herpes is a painful thing. So is there a post Correction: Is there is there a long term effect which can have a problem, and is there a regular required care which is required? 
Yeah, herpes, uh, uh, it can involve the superficial layer of cornea or the deeper layer of cornea also. So in a superficial uh, herpetic keratitis or uh, stromal keratitis, and it can cause an endothelial uh, herpetic keratitis. So, so depending upon the involvement of part of the cornea, we need to give a treatment. Uh, it may need uh, for a long term, and it may recur. Herpetic uh, corneal ulcer can recur afterwards also. So that again, a patient uh, can present with a similar type of complaint again and again. So sometimes we need to give a prophylactic treatment for a six months to one year also in cases of the herpetic uh, corneal involvement, depending upon the which part of the cornea has involved and severity of the disease. Dr. Wara, can, I hear always, you, can you hear me? Dr. Wara? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I always found, I can hear I'm, Yes, I always found it useful to keep some fluorescein strips in my clinic. And I can just put it into right. my eye, into the eye. And then uh, uh, my ophthalmoscope has got a little green light on it. And I found it very useful to detect uh, an ulcer at a very early yeah. stage. As opposed to just like, like Dr. Wazit saying, you know, just blasting everybody with steroid eye drops. <laughs> you can use a, a cobalt blue light of an ophthalmoscope. And once you put a fluorescent inside the furnaces, you can use a blue cobalt light to see the whether there is a corneal involvement. In the ICU also, we uh, have a great help of the fluorescent strips to see the corneal uh, involvement in the diseases, such as the Stephen Johnson syndrome. Excellent. That's a good, uh, Thank you. very good way to you know, keep it uh, OPT. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Such a simple, uh, low tech solution. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions on the floor? If not, um, then uh, I thank you very much, Dr. Warat, for your wonderful presentation. It was very clinically, very useful, Thanks. especially for us non ophthalmologists And I'm sure the audience here would also appreciate Thanks. it very much. And I thank you very much again for thank participating you. in our CMAO uh, talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Dr. Question. For your excellent presentation. We will wind up this session now. Yes. Uh, we will uh, thank you for everyone for joining in. See you again next week. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Everyone. Um, yeah. I look forward to uh, seeing